Welcome to the Realty Plus Real Talk series where we talk to industry experts to know their honest views and opinions and real facts and figures. And today we have with us an eminent personality, the veteran of the real estate industry, former CEO and country head JNL India, Mr. Ramesh Nair. Mr. Nair, uh, Ramesh Nair, a very warm welcome to you. Good to see you too, Satna. Mr. Nair, first question, do you have had a long and illustrious career with JLL India spanning more than two decades. So let's take a look back at your professional journey over these years. You know, let's take a glimpse of that. Sapna, I started uh, my career in 1996 uh, uh, back in uh, Chennai. But uh, the real uh, transformation of uh, the Indian real estate started uh, sometime around uh, the year 2000, when uh, the IT sector uh, started uh, gaining uh, prominence. Uh, we all remember the first uh, city uh, was uh, Bangalore, which uh, shot into prominence. And then other cities started uh, emerging, Mumbai. Uh, we had Hyderabad, Chennai, all uh, emerging. So that was uh, the first uh, big uh, trend uh, we started seeing India becoming a, a IT uh, destination. Uh, then uh, suddenly in 2001, uh, the big uh, big crash happened. Uh, the dot com uh, crash uh, happened. Markets kind of uh, went down. The IT sector went through some uh, tough times during uh, that uh, that year. And I still remember the commercial sector was just about reviving uh, around 2000. Uh, and then again, it kind of uh, went down in uh, 2001. Uh, 2002 uh, was the year when uh, one started seeing the beginning of. Uh, multiplexes uh, uh, in the uh, in the country and uh, that's uh, that's when there were some tax exemptions and uh, all that uh, uh, being offered and you start seeing those multiplexes beginning to uh, kind of uh, come up uh, 2003 is probably one of the most important years uh, in the last uh, 20 odd years uh, in uh, in the country and uh, that's when the sector actually kind of uh, took off uh, so we had uh, uh, the residential uh, market uh, taking off. We had uh, the commercial market uh, uh, taking off. Uh, uh, I, I still remember if you'd uh, bought an apartment uh, somewhere around 2003, 2004, 2008, your uh, residential prices, irrespective of where you were in India, would have gone up around 225%. So we all started thinking we'd become very good uh, investors, but who had invested uh, at that time in anywhere in the country in residential in 2003 and 4 would have made the 225 percent uh, or the capitalization in uh, residential so 2003 very very important uh, year 2004 uh, i think was again uh, kind of uh, a great foundational year where uh, we saw uh, uh, residential home loan rates uh, went to an all-time low back then at around 7.25 percent and then that kind of started again uh, helping the boom uh, in the residential uh, sector uh, starting then. Uh, for people like me, I thought 2005 was probably a very, very important year uh, when uh, the government opened up uh, FDI, uh, which was uh, the press, which the government opened up. Uh, then I remember Kamal Nath, uh, who's the industries minister, had uh, opened up FDI in uh, real estate. And uh, you've seen uh, the 60 plus billion dollars uh, of FDI, which came into the uh, country uh, after that. So 2005 again, uh, that was uh, the most important uh, thing uh, which uh, happened. Uh, 2006, uh, again, I, I would remember it uh, from where the government was investing a lot of money on, uh, on infrastructure. Uh, the government was uh, putting up uh, uh, modernizing uh, airports. If you remember, there was a lot of uh, uh, highway projects uh, happening, a lot more new uh, national highways, roads. Uh, so airport-driven uh, uh, real estate. Uh, uh, and if you remember uh, pre-2006, uh, you remember the old airports we used to have in our countries. And uh, then Mumbai uh, took off. You had uh, Bangalore, uh, sorry, uh, Mumbai and Delhi took off. And after uh, some time, Airports in Hyderabad, Bangalore, but that 2006 was this year when this modernization of airports started uh, happening. 2007, I would remember for uh, all the public listings uh, of uh, many developers, especially uh, DLF. Uh, we saw the kind of market cap uh, DLF had uh, created. With DLF had become one of the biggest developers in uh, Asia based on uh, market cap uh, at uh, that point of time. And I think. Uh, 
overall the listing uh, also has helped uh, the industry become a lot more uh, transparent and uh, organized more than uh, ever before uh, 2008 uh, uh, and 9 were very uh, tough years uh, better not to uh, kind of uh, the global financial crisis happened although india did very well in 2008 uh, and uh, india kind of peaked even till uh, even after lehman happened in september india was still doing well in september october and then things started uh, going down but globally not a great year 2008 uh, 9 and uh, demand uh, significantly went down in 2009. Uh, but the good news was India kind of bounced back also very fast in 2010. I remember the middle after the UPA2 came back into uh, power, uh, the government, uh, uh, things started uh, kind of uh, improving uh, very high. Uh, 2010, uh, I think, was an year where, uh, landmark year where the uh, office sector really started kind of bouncing back. And uh, office uh, started uh, kind of uh, going up uh, again and again and again. Uh, every year office started uh, uh, going up, except for a couple of years where it kind of uh, went out. It was, it's a very good U-shaped recovery from 2000, uh, sorry, V-shaped recovery from 2008 to going down to 2009 and coming back in uh, 2010. Uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, the next few years, 2011, uh, I would uh, remember it uh, for uh, the FDI of uh, uh, in the retail uh, uh, sector. Uh, 2013 onwards, uh, I would say uh, 2013 was not uh, that much of an uh, 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 eventful year, but uh, 2014 onwards, especially I think the government's uh, focus uh, around, uh, uh, around uh, bringing in more uh, FDI into uh, all aspects of real estate, uh, promoting affordable uh, housing, 2015, uh, the smart city uh, thing, 2016, uh, not a great year with uh, demonetization uh, happening. Uh, 17, the biggest uh, reform is the government did uh, the RADA. Uh, uh, 18, uh, we saw uh, the island of uh, crisis happen. Uh, 19, uh, uh, things, uh, office sector did uh, extremely uh, well. Uh, and 20, uh, whatever we've seen in uh, uh, the pandemic. So, uh, so I think there's been, uh, Many ups and downs uh, for the sector. Probably the most, the biggest uh, peak I would say for the office was 2019. Uh, the biggest uh, peak uh, for uh, residential was uh, around uh, 2011, uh, 12, uh, and now residential kind of uh, bouncing back. Biggest peak for industrial uh, again 2019. Biggest uh, peak for. Uh, uh, retail again uh, would have been, let's say, 2014, 15, when all those uh, balls kind of uh, come in. So real estate, uh, those uh, you supply demand uh, dynamics, and there's more supply uh, uh, tend to drop and the vacancy levels go, so prices tend to drop. And we've seen play out uh, uh, over the years. But the best thing that's happened to the Indian real estate uh, sector over the years is uh, it's become a lot more transparent. Uh, it's become a lot more end user driven. Uh, there is a lot more uh, FDI coming uh, in, into the country uh, than uh, ever uh, before. I remember FDI back in 2009, 10 had dropped even to a billion dollars. And uh, today it's back to a $6 billion uh, number. The big uh, owners of real estate across the world are also the same uh, uh, owners uh, of in, uh, India. So these are some of the things uh, sometimes I've seen uh, over the last few years uh, in the uh, in I the think you have really uh, very well encapsulated the entire journey of real estate uh, you know in the past 20 years and what were the highs and lows for uh, real estate uh, you know so how was your approach changing with you know all these new developments that were happening uh, over the years so as a professional organization you know you were heading this how did your approach towards you know your advice for your clients was towards all these developments so the kind of clients also kept uh, kind of uh, changing. So initially, uh, uh, if you look at it, the most most of the property consultancy business uh, was focused around the, the office sector. And uh, then we started getting into other asset classes. Uh, retail was set as an asset class we got into uh, quite early. Uh, over the last few years, using newer asset classes like uh, industrial uh, uh, come up, uh, the land uh, as an asset class uh, gained its uh, uh, prominence. Uh, so one is asset class wise. Second is uh, uh, initially all business was centered around Indian local uh, corporates back in the 90s, the early 2000s. 
and uh, by 2005 6 it started becoming uh, very multinational oriented uh, from all aspects whether it's from an owner point of view occupier point of view and uh, also from an investor point of view today you look at the top 10 uh, developers they all have an international uh, connection uh, either funded uh, by international developers or some of them are international developers themselves in the uh, top uh, top 10 so uh, we have seen a change in uh, client uh, profile change in market and we are talking a very very big scale uh, okay. i still remember 2000 uh, the, uh, i used to uh, be an office broker in chennai and uh, office demand used to be just like uh, a 1 lakh square feet or something and at that time 2000 uh, 2001 1 to 2 lakh square feet and uh, that ended up uh, becoming like 75 lakh square feet in 2007 so uh, we we've seen the scale uh, kind of becoming uh, much bigger okay. uh, we have uh, seen the profile of uh, client the way the market is uh, structured you i'm sure so many you remember at one time people would say delhi is 80% cash and 50% cash in mumbai to buy an apartment and things like that today nobody talks about uh, all that i'm sure there is secondary there is still cash elements and stuff like that involved but uh, the overall how the market is uh, organized the market is uh, become more structured and uh, transparent i think that'll be the biggest change I, that that's true the biggest development has been real estate becoming more organized more transparent especially after rera and after demon, demonetization that you know most cash transactions are now going away from the sector and as you rightly mentioned the developers the whole profile and the scale and magnitude of the operations has completely changed uh, coming to the current scenario you know we have seen upswing in housing demand i know which is mostly attributed to pent up demand uh, to the government incentive especially the stamp duty cut but with the stamp duty cut now coming to an end do you see tapering of uh, housing demand in coming years because a lot of developers are demanding stamp duty cut extension what is your view how the real estate segment is going to play out so the residential so sapna if you remember uh, same time uh, last year was uh, we were all panicking and uh, this is probably the worst phase of uh, what i had seen in uh, real estate in 23 uh, years exactly the last week of march thank god it's uh, uh, thank god it's over and uh, but today when i look back uh, i think uh, from uh, let's start with residential uh, i think the worst is uh, definitely definitely behind us Uh, in the last 3 4 months we have definitely seen a significant uh, revival in the residential market so flow shares whether it's in terms of uh, sales whether it's in terms of uh, new launches whether it's in terms of walk-ins uh, there's a lot better sentiments uh, uh, developers are uh, uh, finally pouring in more concrete which means uh, faster construction uh, timelines uh, consumers have understood the importance of owning homes Uh, uh i think uh, the two three good things which have happened and this is widely documented is obviously developers are giving discounts so lower prices for the consumer uh lower interest rates uh, uh i was uh, uh uh reading that this is not the lowest interest rates in 20 years this is interest rates in 40 years and oh. uh, yeah in 40 years this never we've never seen these kind of uh, uh, interest uh, rates ready to move in uh, are selling today we all know that uh, and uh, uh, things like the slower stamp duty which uh, maharashtra government did uh, i think uh, a little more uh, extension of these things uh, will help uh, what uh, like what maharashtra government did if uh, other governments can uh, kind of uh, 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 take uh, take stock of that and uh, implement such ideas i personally feel that uh, there will be a little bit of uh, slow down once uh, the stamp uh, duty uh, benefits uh, get over uh, but uh, there is a lot of pent up uh, demand and uh, uh, one thing you should also note sapna is uh, not too many launches are happening launches have started but not too many launches are happening so obviously ready uh, inventory is getting sold very fast people want ready apartments they're willing to pay that extra uh, premium and uh, developers are also kind of kind of finally understood that there's no point uh, kind of just keeping on entry and this is uh, the time they should uh, kind of give discounts and uh, keep uh, clearing uh, their uh, inventory uh, previously they would give freebies and gold and car and all that kind of today mm-hmm. developers saying come here i'll give you uh, a proper discount and uh, i feel uh, this residential momentum which we have seen in the last 6 uh, months 
uh, will uh, continue uh, some more uh, some more time Okay, so so for the buyers out there, what is your advice? Is this the right time to buy? Because our prices might increase. I think it's a great time to. I know uh, many a times uh, when you uh, talk to uh, real estate uh, uh, consultants, uh, they're always saying this is a good uh, good time to buy. Mm -hmm. But I sincerely, genuinely feel this is uh, a good. Please do your homework. Uh, please uh, find out your dream home. Just make sure it's uh, nearing completion or completed. Uh, quality developer who kind of uh, keeps his uh, promises. Uh, uh, and uh, this is and and you look at it. Most of the launches developers have learned their lessons also. Sapna, as today you look at any launches, it's uh, mostly mid market uh, and affordable. Uh, there's a lot of government focus on uh, 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 everything from tax uh, benefits to everything around uh, affordable and uh, mid market. And uh, even in the budget, uh, uh, recently there was uh, that extension of additional interest uh, deduction, uh, which was uh, given. Uh, I think it's uh, definitely a good good time uh, to buy these serious uh, uh, shortlist four five projects, and uh, then go to uh, these developers, negotiate hard, and uh, close uh, close the deal. So uh, that would be my. So great advice from Mr. Ramesh Nair. Right time to buy. Do your homework. Do your due diligence, and go with the the trusted branded developers. And yes, as you rightly said, most of the demand does lie in mid income and affordable housing. So these are the sweet spots for the developers as well. Talking about commercial real estate, you know, when this entire COVID situation happened, it was. Uh, considered a death knell for flexi spaces but recently we have seen enterprise level deals happening in flexi spaces you know big deals happening what is the trend you are seeing in the commercial real estate uh, for uh, you know for next two years five years i think uh Sandra, this this year is going to be a little tough from a demand point of view uh, I would have said something different uh, three months uh, back uh, I was uh, more positive of uh, re-entry strategies of uh, companies uh, but the last uh, few uh, weeks the spike in cases uh, kind of uh, across the country especially in financial centers like uh, Bombay uh, it's going to kind of uh, reduce uh, the, uh, it, uh, the the percentage of re-entry strategies uh, people are a little worried to come back to uh, offices uh, so demand is going to be tough this year uh, overall absorption like uh, uh, last year last year was very uh, if you remember 46 million had dropped to uh, nearly 26 million uh, square feet uh, in terms of office uh, absorption. Uh, that brings us to the question in terms of how uh, uh, how the overall uh, uh, the office will evolve. Office, uh, what uh, office? Everyone is kind of uh, debating. Uh, I think uh, overall uh, an office uh, will become uh, will become a place where uh, people kind of socialize and learn and connect. Uh, that'll become the main uh, character uh, uh, of the uh, office space and becomes very, very important for companies uh, to make sure uh, whenever people walk into an office space, uh, they get that memorable experience. That becomes uh, very, very uh, uh, important. I believe uh, most companies will uh, start taking all the sustainability and green programs very, very uh, seriously. Uh, all employees uh, will work from three different uh, kind of uh, uh, zones or places uh, you'll be working from home you'll be working from uh, office uh, and you'll be working from a decentralized hub so uh, this is that hybrid model which is uh, kind of uh, uh, emerging uh, companies uh, will even pay more attention to their people more than uh, ever before uh, office sharing ratios uh, there'll be a lot of thought uh, which will go around uh, around that uh, footprint per employee again uh, would be something which would uh, be uh, looked at very very uh, seriously. And new behaviors uh, will will happen. And uh, for those of us who went back to office uh, from last May June when things started uh, opening up, we saw some new behaviors uh, emerging, right? And some of these new behaviors will become uh, uh, permanent. Uh, so uh, I think most companies will have a set of employees will be working five days a week will be working four days a week three days a week two days a week. so they'll kind of classify employees amongst uh, uh, how many days uh, they will uh, end up uh, uh, working uh, one thing i can <clears throat> all not every function can be uh, done uh, working from home right. there are certain uh, functions uh, of your job uh, which can if you need to do it effectively it has to be in person uh, now, I've uh, struggled uh, while working from home uh, on negotiations, for example. 
uh, I've struggled uh, uh, to work while working from home on relationship building. You can't build relationships looking at a screen. You can't do an effective negotiation looking uh, looking at a screen. Uh, uh, I know many companies today are doing onboarding and uh, uh, all that, but it's not. Uh, it's again not uh, as effective as uh, sitting in uh, people. Uh, I've also seen that critical decisions uh, is uh, not uh, not easy while having those critical decisions. Those uh, so that's something which one uh, needs so that's going to be fixed uh, because uh, it's not easy. Uh, we've discussed and debated enough on uh, productivity losses sitting at uh, home, but we also need to look at the type of jobs which can be done from home and the type of jobs which can be done uh, from uh, uh, from uh, face to uh, face to face. So I think overall frequency of office visits overall across the world uh, will kind of come down. And uh, number of uh, people uh, who are coming to office will uh, come down. Those are two things the commercial real estate sector needs to be uh, ready for. We can't be in denial mode. Um, last we were putting us uh, was around 20% impact uh, on office space demand because of work from home. I would uh, continue to kind of uh, uh, stick with uh, that uh, that uh, number. Of course, uh, I think offices are here to stay, and uh, probably, as you said, you know the the their, you know the whole experience or the shape and um, uh, concept of offices might change. But uh, again, space optimization probably uh, the occupiers would be looking at. But yes, even employees are you know more happy working working in an office space with their colleagues. You know, as you said, that the personal interaction uh, you know it cannot be taken away, and probably work from home is there for a short time. In in a you know in a uh, deferred manner probably it will be part of the working going forward a uh, lot of changes in commercial real estate but uh, you know the positive i think the commercial real estate segment sentiments still remain positive because we are seeing a lot of uh, foreign investors interest in indian office spaces a uh, lot lot of deals happening in that yes. That's right. Uh, Sapna, you saw the two biggest uh, deals which have ever happened in the country, which happened uh, a few months back. Uh, Blackstone uh, buying out Fred, Brookfield buying out uh, RMZ. So uh, interest levels uh, in uh, Indian real estate uh, is uh, very, very uh, high. Uh, investors across the world are uh, flush uh, with money. And uh, thanks to uh, overall uh, uh, money flow uh, globally, and uh, all the content databasing which uh, many governments have done and a lot of this money will uh, come into uh, real estate so you'll see a uh, many more uh, big deals uh, happening Fantastic. so fundamentals of indian residential and commercial real estate segment remain strong you also mentioned about new asset classes like fair housing and data parks and industrial parks a uh, lot of opportunities, a lot of developers are looking at foreign in this segment, diversifying their portfolios. But what would be your advice in terms of challenges? You know, because each opportunity comes with challenges as well. So what are your cautions to the developers who are looking at these segments? So a uh, couple of uh, things. Uh, I'm quite bullish this year on two asset classes. Uh, one is uh, industrial and the other is uh, residential. Uh, and uh, I think uh, why? Because uh, a lot of interest uh, of capital chasing, uh, what they're calling uh, the beds, uh, beds and sheds uh, strategy. Uh, beds being uh, uh, accommodation and uh, uh, sheds being uh, storage. A uh, lot of money uh, chasing uh, these uh, asset classes in India, especially if you look at uh, uh, industrial as an asset class, we've seen it grow uh, consistently. It's become an asset class as big as office, 30 million plus square feet of uh, demand uh, every year. Uh, we've heard about uh, how uh, uh, the sector is kind of really impressed uh, in the last few years from a maturity uh, curve uh, point of view. E-com, uh, e-commerce uh, revolution has definitely helped. A lot more institutional uh, ownership. Uh, five, six uh, very good players today in the industrial uh, and warehousing uh, space uh, in the country. Uh, office, uh, this year uh, is a little big. Uh, uh, mainly because uh, of, like I said, in India, especially the re-entry home, uh, those uh, those uncertainties uh, around that. It all depends on how fast offices can be refilled. Uh, those uh, that 600 million square feet of grade A uh, 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 or uh, the, the good quality office space, how fast can that be uh, refilled? And uh, that'll kind of uh, uh, decide on uh, demand going for uh, 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 demand uh, for the future in that sector. 
Oh, okay, fantastic. So new asset classes, definitely uh, Mr. Ramesh Nair is bullish on residential and industrial parks. Uh, what are your predictions for the Indian real estate overall in the next near future? What would be your top three forecast if we are to ask? Uh, this year, uh, tough for uh, uh, office uh, is going to be a little tough this year. Uh, industrial will uh, do well. Residential will do well. Uh, data centers uh, as an asset class uh, will uh, emerge. Uh, uh, distress uh, land deals uh, will uh, happen, again, uh, forced by uh, financial uh, uh, institutions. Uh, the big boys uh, will do uh, bigger. Uh, anyone who adopts uh, technology will uh, and digital tools uh, will do better than uh, their uh, competitors. So that's uh, some of the predictions. Okay, okay. So th those were some very, you know, fine points that Mr. Nair mentioned here. Big boys will do good. You know, some of the segments will have some difficulty, but some segments have very bright future going forward. Talking about you, Mr. Nair, how your next phase of professional journey is aligned? What, what do you have to say on that? So I'm uh, uh, joining a new place uh, in, uh, in July and uh, I'm uh, looking uh, forward, uh, forward to that, uh, Satna. So. Okay, okay. So, so what, what would Mr. Nair be bringing to the new assignments, the learnings? We spoke about your journey. We spoke about all the transformations that you had seen. So what are the learnings that you will be carrying forward with you? So obviously I've been, uh, 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 I've been lucky that uh, I got a great uh, work with over the last uh, 21 years uh, in uh, in jail and two years uh, before that with, uh, uh, in the same industry. Uh, so I hope to kind of take some of these uh, learnings uh, and uh, kind of uh, take it uh, take it to a new uh, new new place and uh, kind of uh, add add value to uh, customers. Try and create uh, good good teams. Uh, try and see if we can uh, create uh, create uh, teams uh, which are high on performance, uh, which are which have high uh, high values, and uh, try and see how I can uh, I can build teams and uh, build uh, uh, build trust and build my network uh, daily. So uh, we'll keep some of those uh, things in uh, things in mind. Try and try and create more uh, leadership uh, and. Uh, Try and create a more uh, authentic culture. So those are some of those things which I've uh, tried doing, and uh, will uh, take it to uh, a new place where I. Do. That sounds fantastic, and you know, with your remarkable journey that you have had, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure you know wherever you will be joining next would be getting a lot of value from your experience. So wish you all the best for your future plans, and wish you best of health. We just got to know that you have recently recovered from COVID, so. Thank you. But, uh, you know, for now, thank you so much for joining here, for sharing your time, your experiences and your views on the real estate sector for the benefit of uh, all our uh, viewers, our readers. Thank you so much, Mr. Naya, for being here with us today. Thanks. Uh, seeing you, uh, Satna, once again. So look thank forward you. to staying correct. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Bye.